You are listening to the Lingerie Success Podcast, the first podcast of its kind committed to practical and actionable marketing strategies, business advice, interviews, and tools to help your lingerie store thrive. Are you ready? So let's get started. Hello, Lingerie Success listeners, and welcome to episode 11 of the Lingerie Success Podcast, where we provide practical, actionable advice to help your lingerie store thrive. This week, we'll be talking about content marketing for lingerie stores, and more specifically, blogging. So content is something that we've been talking a lot about lately, about defining your customers and creating your buyer personas and then creating content to suit your buyers and your buyer personas. And this week we'll be getting into blogging, diving a little bit more in depth than we have in the past and sharing some tips and some ideas and some things that you should consider before you start when you're blogging and three and six months down the road. So I wanted to check in with my co-host first. How are you doing today, Chris? Very good. Very been a very busy week. It's social media week here in LA. Unfortunately, we're not attending it physically, but we're doing it on on demand live and stuff like that. So that's a lot of things going on um, in our company and in our projects that we're doing here in social media week as well. Yeah, I feel like I'm there. Their virtual um, courses are really, or the virtual videos are really, really good. I feel like I'm sitting there with them watching the talks. Um, and Angel, how are you doing today? Pretty good. What do you think of Social Media Week? Oh, it's uh, I've been watching some of the videos when I have time. And yeah, there, it's it's good to see how other companies are you know, using social media to forward their brand. So it's awesome. Yeah, I think um, I just wanted to touch on that. You know, I, the, first, the first ever session that we watched was a session by Nat Geo, which is pretty amazing because considering they're a legacy brand. You know, we've, we've had National Geographic since we were little kids. And to see them take advantage of the Internet in the way they are, producing content, opening their world up, and just really getting into science and stuff like that and making it interesting. I know there's a lot of legacy brands, like I'm not going to mention them, but they're publications that are sort of dying off because they've never really been able to evolve and kind of get their content out in front of the people in the way that consumer, general, modern consumers are consuming information nowadays. They relied on the old way of doing things, but Nat Geo has completely stayed on the cutting edge of everything and are always taking advantage of whatever features is out there for them to deliver the content. So I think that's amazing. If I hope they put this information online for, for the rest of the world to see, not just on the paid sessions. I think it would be an incredible thing for every brand to see that. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, just looking at National Geographic, I mean, the evolution of the brand and the fact that they are now online and they have a huge presence online with their photos and with everything that they let their um, their photographers contribute to online. It's pretty incredible. And it just shows the power of content and how um, technology is constantly evolving. Social media is constantly evolving. And it's just always a good idea to create your content and get out there and, and start today. And um, we wanted to dive right in and maybe talk a little bit about some of the benefits of blogging. So some of our, our lingerie listeners, you might be interested in blogging or maybe considering it for your store, but you might be wondering what you can get out of it um, because it is pretty time consuming and it does take a lot of, of effort and involvement on your part. And so it's a good idea to know some of the things that you might be able to expect to gain from blogging. So Chris, what are some of the benefits of blogging? Perfect. Well, before we dive into the benefits of blogging, I want to sort of take a step back and let's get into some of the basic premise for our listeners that are not familiar with blogging in general. So many people are still confused over what constitutes a blog over a website. You know, part of the problem is that many businesses today have combined it. We have, you know, on our website, we have two blogs that we're running that are successful, plus the website encapsulates the entire blog. Um, but there's two features of a blog that sets it apart from any traditional website, blogs are updated very frequently. Blogs have new content added several times regularly, maybe on a daily basis like we do, or once a week, or once a month, and so on. And blog blogs allow for readers to engage, communicate with the writer, with the, with the content producer, and all that stuff. And it often includes, it's included in the social media space because it's a way for us to communicate our brand, our story, the solutions to the problems that we offer and continually providing value. You know, but a blog can live inside a website. So I think that's a common mis 
you know, miscommunication uh, for some people thinking that a blog is a website, website because a blog can also live outside of your website. You know, like there's blogs that are blogger networks, um, like blogger.com, wordpress.org, and many other things. Tumblr is another one. It's a microblogging platform. So I think there's a lot of confusion with that. So with that clarification, you know, let's get into the benefits of it. So the first benefit that I want to take on is, you know, who doesn't want more traffic to their website, right? And eventually, this leads to traffic to their store. Of course, everyone does. And a blog can help you drive traffic to your website and eventually to your business. So how does it work? Basically, it combines blogging, social media, and search engines that work hand in hand together to deliver the content and expertise that is a brand or a store for our listeners um, that they're sharing with their audience. You know, think about how many pages there are on your website. A lot of the retailers that I see probably maybe have three or four, maybe five. So, you know, there's not a ton of them out there. And think about how often you update those pages. Probably not that often. And maybe if you change your address, that's when you would do. Your About Us page doesn't really get updated. You don't change who you are in a matter of, you know, every single day. But blogging helps solve that problem of not being, you know, being up to date with stuff. The more content you have on your website, the more pages the search engines can rank, and of course, the more traffic that they can send to you. Also, you know, the more blogs you have, you can post these on your social media to deliver the value and showcase your authority. You know, in case of our listeners, they're broad-fitting specialty and get that information out there. The other thing is it also helps convert the traffic into a lead. You know, that you have traffic coming to your website through your blog, you have the opportunity to convert this traffic into a lead or an appointment, for example. You know, just like every blog post you write, you know, it gets indexed by the search engine. And every, every time somebody visits that page, you can add a call to action in that page to tell them to make an appointment. For example, we were talking about this. We're trying to develop lead magnets and tripwires and stuff like that, which is a little bit more advanced for some of our listeners. But that's exactly um, content that we're trying to develop to get people to absorb more value from us. And in turn, we will send them to one of our stores to get a broad-fitting appointment, right? So that's really another way for you to be able to convert your customers. The other way is it helps establish authority. I think this is, the, this is sort of left on the wayside because it's untrackable. You can't really quantify how much authority you get from posting information. But you just have to remember, the more you talk to somebody, the more you, or the more you listen to somebody, almost like a mentor, you tend to listen to whatever they're saying and follow their advice because you know that the information they're giving you is valuable, practical, and applicable to your life currently. And the same thing with your blog. You know, you, it helps you establish your authority because you're providing value for your customers and continually solving their problems. You know, finally, it has long-term residual value. We talk about this a lot. You know, just this morning, we were, you and I, Katie, were talking about SEO, you know, trying to do some keywords, special, um, special uh, keywords that we want to target and stuff like that. The benefit of this is once you write a blog content, you get it uploaded on the web page, on your internet, I mean, on the internet, on, on your website, you may be trying to target one specific keyword, but as your, as your page gets ranked and the pages get recognized more and more, you will then get ranked for other keywords. And 10 years from now, as long as your website is still alive, that page that you invested, you know, 30 minutes to an hour on will continually drive residual traffic for your business, for your website, and ultimately for your bottom line. So I think those are the key benefits that our listeners can take away from starting their own blog today. Yeah, absolutely. And with blogging too, it can definitely um, convert your readers into customers. And that's definitely one of the best parts of blogging, just um, answering their questions and being able to provide relevant current answers to their problems in a very um, short amount of time. So it's relatively instant once you um, once you you know write it out and then publish it's a very very quick process whether you're going on tumblr whether you're doing it through facebook and writing a short blog um, or on your website or on an um, an outside platform so those are all um, really easy ways to to get started um, but also like chris said it helps you 
um, be recognized as an authority. And the great thing about that is when you're a local authority in your community, you're going to have women who are going to come to your store to check out what you offer to get your, your advice, and they're looking to you to solve their problems. So we often talk a lot about solving pain points and answering customer questions, and blogging is a great way to do that um, offline. And it it's wonderful too because the keywords that you're you're ranking for, the information that you're providing, it's working for you while you're not within your store. While your store is closed, that content that you're creating can help convert those readers into customers, and that's also powerful as well. It's making um, it's making that work for you when you're not you know running your store physically. Um, and so we wanted to talk a little bit too about three things to consider before getting started. So blogging can be daunting. There's a lot to think about whether it comes to um, to platforms or whether you think you're thinking about content ideas or how you're going to make time for it. So we thought we would share maybe three to four things um, you should consider before you get started with the blog. Thanks, Katie. Well, the first thing you need to know is again the pain point of your customers. We talked about this a lot in this podcast series. You know, you're blogging about the solutions to problems that your customers are having about their bras or breast tissue every single day. That's sort of the 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 essence of what you will be talking about on your blog. You know, what you have to consider what platforms, you know, free or hosted platforms. I'm sure Angel will talk about this a little bit later since he's the expert on this. But personally, I prefer hosted ones because again, it provides residual SEO benefit to your overall brand and overall website. And finally, you know, have to be ready to build a mailing list. I think this gets uh, gets lost a lot because our listeners, our subscri- I mean, our our retailers don't really sometimes find the benefit of building a list, or they're just building a list when everybody, when every time that somebody buys from their store, they write it in a little ledger or they add it into their POS. But there's no communication. And the key is that you have to be educating your customer on a constant basis. Again, we were talking about this earlier. We had a meeting earlier this morning about this. You know, we're developing content to sort of pre-qualify people because there's certain psychological effects of learning something, right? Like for us, the content that we're going to be providing and helping our customers produce will be about bra fitting, about caring for your bras and stuff like that. And what that tells us is we're already defining the value of the bras that people are going to buy ahead of time. So by the time they come to your store, you're spending less and less time trying to educate them on the benefits of a bra. Because a lot of of bra buyers, you know, we have to admit that they buy their bras from a, you know, a big box retail chain, right? Where they probably spend maybe $15, $20 on a bra that they don't really care if it gets torn apart in the washing machine. But that's not the type of valuable bras and products that we provide and not the type of products that our retailers do provide. So it's important that our, con- that our content can sort of get, give this context for their buyers, for their customers, so that they can be able to pre-qualify them, pre-educate them into the buying process before they even step, in, step into the door. The bottom line is you know, the blog should be considered as a value delivery channel that can convert your customer into a lead or an appointment and not to sell on it on the first place. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I think that's some really good information. Um, I would also say, though, I'm, I'm kind of half and half as far as blog content in regards to sales goes. I feel like for blog content, there is there is a way to do it that can sell products to the customers. Um, you can you can list reviews, you can talk about your product offerings, what we were talking about earlier um, outside of the podcast with um, with creating lead magnets, and that in itself is a sales channel. So those are, those are really good ways to kind of um, intentionally convince your customers to buy from you again or to buy from you in the first place by providing valuable content. Um, and also with with um, building your email list, it's a list that you own. And one thing that we've talked about before in podcasts is um, when you when you're on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you're borrowing um, their users, and you're, you're borrowing them for a um, a limited amount of time. They they may not be your customers yet, but when you have an email list, you have a specific list of customers who are interested in your products, or and or they're interested in hearing from you. 
And one thing that I really want to mention, um, so I actually got my start in bra fitting, um, and I did it for several years, and I loved it, and I still bra fit um, here at Parfait. And one thing that I noticed just within working in retail, um, with when you get a customer's email list, they they want to hear from you. And I think sometimes you might become a you might be afraid that maybe if you email them or if you contact them, they they might get scared or they may never buy from you again. But I would say that for the most part, that's just really not the case. I mean, the customers that are giving you their email, they're expecting to hear from you. They want to get a newsletter, a coupon, a promotion. Um, they want to hear about your new products. And depending on what type of customer they are, their um, their demographic and, and what products they're interested in in your store um, really depends on the content that you'll deliver to them through email. And so I think just, just saying that you know they do want to hear from you and that um, sending them emails you know once a week twice a week however often you can that's right for your customer base is always always a smart idea because that's the list that you own yeah i think it goes back to value if you're delivering value to them you can definitely like for us we we list on our blog like 10 uh, black bras to consider and we include our competitors in those content because we don't feel that we're the only ones that produce the best black bras of course there's other competitors that we have that do as well. So that's be, you know, that is us being consistent with our values as a company and providing the maximum value for our customers. Because we can't, if we just list our products on our own reviews, then it's, you know, it's we're disservicing the industry and we're disservicing the people that are consuming our content. So I think, you know, keeping that in mind, you're absolutely correct that you could definitely find a way to include sales information within the content that you provide. You just have to be cognizant of the fact that you're not just selling them. You're going to post something. I see this a lot. Um, that's why I wanted to talk about it a little bit more. When I vi whenever I visit one of our retailers' blogs, I see that they're saying, come to the store today. We have a sale. And they put a big banner of whatever product that's on sale. 15, 15 20 years from now, that sale is irrelevant, right? Because it's already passed. That's not the type of value that you should be building on your blog. You should be building value that can that's evergreen, that you can consistently get more leads later on down the road as opposed to just that one easy money that we're trying to get all the time. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and you know, with, with that as well, you're building trust with your, your audience. And building trust is so much more important than just trying to sell them something. And when it's, you know, a product that you have and it's something that you're trying to make an instant sale, I think sometimes, and this happens to marketers too, you get in this habit of thinking because social media is so instant and it provides instant gratification, you think, well, I'm just going to make a post. I'm going to post a new product and I'm going to get sales. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer to get sales from that post or to get um, an ROI from that post. And also, um, it depends on how frequently you post with your audience. So if it's something where you're posting frequently on Facebook and they're used to hearing from you, then they're more likely to click on your post to engage on it. But if it's something where they hear crickets, you know, five out of seven days a week, and you only post twice a week, they might be less likely to engage with you because they just don't feel that connection yet. And even those customers that you're really close to, your good customers that come into your store that buy regularly for you, from you, um, maybe they just don't feel that connection yet on Facebook or on social media to engage with you there, whereas they're still coming in to shop with you in store. So it's making, it's making it possible to build trust with your audience online, to get your customers engaged, and delivering value through your content is such an amazing way to do that. And that's why we're so passionate about it. Um, and we also wanted to talk about some tips for choosing a blogging platform. So Angel is the expert on this, so I'm going to leave it to him. Um, and he has some great information for you guys on blogging. Thank you, Katie. So you're sold on the benefits of blogging, and now you want to you know how to get started. So having a dedicated place to blog is ideal. But keep in mind that maybe you can use your current social media platform, namely Facebook, to seamlessly get into the habit of posting on a regular basis with having to use or learn any new software. Blogging on Facebook is best done through the Notes app, which is located on, on your main profile page, not your timeline, under the top right More tab. Look under there, and you're looking for Notes. Using the Notes app lets you add in graphics and format long-form long posts with better control than just your simple status updates. 
using Facebook to blog has the benefit of no new software to learn or set up, and you have a built-in audience of all your current followers. There are some drawbacks in that the links to specific posts won't be as clean and short as if you were blogging on a specific platform, but starting on Facebook can be a good option. Next, we move on to dedicated blogging platforms. These do take a few additional steps to set up and slight learning curves, but are really the ideal way to get the most benefit from your blog. There are several free and low-cost options such as Blogger, Tumblr, Medium, Squarespace, and Wix, all of which have, have great blogging platform options, but we believe the best overall solution is using WordPress. Whether you use the free and super easy to set up version at wordpress.com or use a self-hosted version on your own server, WordPress, WordPress is a great balance between ease of use and powerful flexibility. You can start to post literally within minutes of setting up your WordPress blog, but you can also use hundreds of extensions that can both improve your presentation to your readers and your ROI in regards to being more efficient in all the behind the scenes stuff like analytics and SEO, which are very important. WordPress is a platform we use for our own websites and blogs, so we might be a little biased, but we chose that platform because it really is that powerful, and somewhere between 25 to 30 percent of all websites use it as their engine to run not just blogs, but entire websites. So to get more details on how to set up your own blog on WordPress, make sure to check our uh, show notes for this episode. Thank you so much, Angel, for those amazing tips for our listeners, um, especially in regards to WordPress. Uh, like you said, that's something that we use here at Parfait. Um, so we, we might be a little biased, but it is something that we really do like. But definitely, um, I loved your, your first suggestion to start on Facebook. Um, I think that's a really great option for lingerie retailers who maybe don't have the time yet to run um, a blog on their website or through an outside platform, um, just because it gives you that option of creating content almost immediately. So you can go on your Facebook page, um, you can follow the steps that Angel provided, and then you can go ahead and you can post something today. And that is amazing. I think one of the things that we we really, really try to, um, to get across in our podcast is just starting. I think some of us sometimes are so um, unsure of what might happen if we if we start with SEO, if we start blogging, if we start um, doing something different. But at the same time, it's just a good idea to start and try it out. And you might find that maybe you know maybe it's not um, it's not something that's working for your business at first. Maybe you need to tweak a couple things. Um, I know with our blog that we've. We have the same buyer personas that we've had from the beginning, but as our customers have evolved, so have we. And our content has evolved too. And that's normal. It's normal, you know, like when Chris was talking earlier about National Geographic, it's normal for your content to evolve with you and with your business. So definitely don't be afraid to get started on Facebook. Don't be afraid to get started on um, an outside blogging platform either. So Chris, where can our lingerie listeners find some blog topic ideas when they want to get started? Well, again, really knowing your audience here is very, very key. We talked about this in the previous podcast, writing down everyday problems your consumers are experiencing, what they tell you. They call you on the phone, they complain about something. They're talking to you in the fitting room, they're complaining about something. They walk into you, they show you their dilapidated bra, like we were talking about earlier. (laughs) They tell you, I want this bra, but why do they want a new one? All of those things, if you just get three a day for the next 30 days, you will never, ever run out of content ever again. So those are just simple things where you could get blog ideas to just, you know, write about. And I just wanted to touch on something different here. Um, In developing a blog, we talk about writing. But developing a blog does not necessarily limit you to writing. If audio, like this podcast, is for you, then posting an audio of something on your website is good too, or a video. You can do that as well if that's the comp- if that's the content that you are willing to provide on your blog. But I just wanted to talk about the benefits a little bit. If you're writing content or text, that's what the search engines will find. So I just wanted to kind of put that into context in considering what type of content you're pasting on your blog. Yeah, I love that. I think um, with our listeners, we all have different strengths. Some of us are really strong writers. Some of us are strong speakers. Um, Some of us are very comfortable, you know, in front of a a camera. And those are all really great skills. And it's finding the one that's the best for you that you're the strongest at, and then really getting your message out through that content. And um, like Chris said, audio and video are really great options. 
And something that we've talked about when you're recording a video or, or recording a podcast or sharing audio with your, your customers, um, consider getting it transcribed. So that's an option too. And that's something that you don't have to do yourself. You can actually pay someone um, through an online website like Fiverr. Um, and there are a couple others as well. Um, or you can do it yourself and you'll have that transcribed content so that you can create um, that so that search engines do recognize that information online with your video. But definitely video is something that is becoming increasingly more and more popular um, as you know, as we're moving towards virtual reality and, and everything else. And it's, it's exciting, but it's a little bit daunting um, when you're you know, blogging and you're used to creating written content and then you're starting with visual content or audio. Um, so definitely, you know, do consider audio um, or a video if it's something that you're more comfortable with. Um, even just recording when you're in the car, maybe talking about talking through a customer problem or a solution or an issue while you're driving um, into a recorder, or maybe a recording app on your phone. Um, that's an option too, but definitely do what um, feels right for you. And, and do what um, what you have time for because when you when you have when you prioritize it you make time for it you're more likely to do it so that's definitely what we would suggest and then with writing too um, you don't have to be a strong writer to have a blog as long as you have you know an understanding of your customers um, you can be a great writer and you can really get across to your customers online and um, not all of us have you know English degrees or journalism degrees or even a, a master's degree and that's perfectly okay um, we're still good at communicating I mean every day you communicate with your customers in store and you answer their problems and you you um, you help them and so the way that you speak with your customers and that you help your customers in store consider translating that online to maybe a blog post online something that you're you're used to doing, um, and that's a really easy way to create content, just speaking as you would um, if you were answering a customer question in store. Um, and then also for blog topic ideas, so I just wanted to add um, with blog topic ideas, um, a couple good ways to get them. So um, like we mentioned, you can look at keywords that you find online through, um, through popular search engines. So if there's a specific keyword that you want your website to rank for, you can consider that. Um, also, just getting in on conversations online with, with your customers, so um, seeing what they're interested in. Maybe, maybe you try out a couple posts on Facebook and it's something that, they, that they're engaging with and you decide that um, maybe it's a good idea to create you know, a blog post around it or audio or a video. So definitely um, listening to your customers, as Chris said, um, in podcast number seven, we talked about um, writing down three ideas a day for 30 days with your team um, or yourself and um, noting them and then creating content for each of those ideas. And honestly, that's such an amazing way to create um, 90 pieces of content, which sounds like a lot, but that's, if you're posting once a day, that's you know one piece a day for three months. So one question that we get a lot here that we, since we blog regularly is how do we find time to maintain a blog? So I'd love to get Chris's um, ideas on this first. So Chris, what suggestions would you have for our listeners? Well, I think it just takes doing it, right? Getting, getting your hands dirty and doing it, you know, making the decision to actually sit down on your computer or in your notebook and start writing. Um, if someone told you that if you talk to them daily, they'll give you their money. I'm sure anybody would keep talking and keep writing. And that, but that's exactly what blogging allows you to do. It's creating content that is residual, um, benef res residually beneficial in the long run, like I mentioned earlier, because your content lives forever and people will find it out online. So why not do it? You know, why not, why not do it? It takes maybe 20 to 30 minutes to write a, a, a content. If you're answering questions that you already are an expert with, that's not that hard. Imagine your blog could be as simple as a Q&A. You get one question, you post an answer to that question or what your takeaway, or you get a product that you think is great, you can review that product on your blog. There are expertise in our brain as people working in this industry already. It's just a matter of putting that on the screen or putting it on paper. Another the tip that I would like to, to um, give our listeners is just do it, right? You know, I read this book earlier. We were talking about this. It's called The Five-Second Rule by Mel Robbins. It was an amazing book because it was so simple. She says it basically takes five seconds for our brain to tell us not to do something. 
because the brain is so powerful that it's trying to protect us. So the concept is known in psychology as metacognition. It's to trick our brain to do what we don't want it to do. You could go five, four, three, two, one, and move, which makes your brain adapt and engage and moves, it moves your brain into using the frontal, free frontal, frontal cortex instead of your residual and daily habits to form any, any action that you're going to do. So you just have to push yourself to do it. I know that's, that sounds simple, but it also is very hard to do. But at the same time, we as a company took a while to really engage in doing blogging ourselves. So I know and I understand how hard it is. But at the same time, once you start doing it, then you start seeing the benefits of it. It becomes easier and easier as you engage in it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I, I love that, Chris. I think um, also with blogging, just getting into a routine. So deciding, you know, maybe on three days a week or maybe every day, every other day, that you'll spend 10, 15 minutes maybe writing down ideas, maybe brainstorming, maybe just um, doing a brain dump, just dumping all of the ideas in your brain that you have about a specific topic. Um, and then, you know, when you are ready to write or to speak or to record that video, um, and just making it work for you. And I think Chris, the advice that he gave about um, just doing it, that is that applies to everything. I mean, if I think sometimes we become, you know, so scared to do things, but um, once you just do it, you'll notice, you know, that you're that you will have rewards from it. There will be benefits um, that come from your blogging efforts. Sometimes it takes, you know, a couple days, a couple weeks. You might not notice it instantly, but it will definitely pay off in the end. Um, however, you decide to create your content. And um, one other thing that we wanted to talk about too was um, an editorial calendar. So for those of you who are new to blogging, um, maybe you haven't considered an editorial calendar yet, but they're definitely useful for organizing um, when you plan on publishing your post, what you're working on, um, if you're including keywords in your post, if you're at that stage, um, writing down your keywords. So I have one that I recommend. I'll go ahead and link to it in the show notes. Um, or you can always Google um, editorial calendar for blogging online. They have some really, really great options out there that will help you stay organized and make it a lot easier to, um, to blog consistently. And we also wanted to talk about some tools that you can use to track your blogging efforts. So once you start blogging, um, you want to know how you're doing. And so that's why it's important to be able to track and understand what you're tracking. Um, and Chris has some great tools that he wants to share with you. Well, there are definitely great tools, but I, I, I want to simplify it because a lot of our listeners probably have not even started a blog yet. So the key here is to use one of the best tools out there. It's called Google Analytics. Right? It's for free. You know, it keeps track of your content, your traffic, where it's coming from. Is Are people consuming it from their mobile phones, from their iPads, from their computers? And is the traffic coming on Facebook, on search engines, and all that good stuff? You know, there are many tools for this. But again, sticking with Google Analytics to start with is very, very beneficial. And it's easy to implement Google Analytics. So basically, sign up with a Google account. Majority of our retailers probably have a Gmail account. If you don't, Go get one. It's absolutely free as well. You connect that. You sign up for a Google Analytics account. They give you a little piece of code at the end of that sign-up process. If you have a web developer or web designer helping you, just give that to them, and they'll get a, they're will get they pasted onto your website, and then you're good. If you are a self-hosted concept, I mean, if you are a self-hosted website, if you use GoDaddy or whatever, there's also an interface for you that asks you, put your Google Analytics tracking here. And it's just a little box. It is a code. It looks like it's like some gibberish, but it's just a code that you paste into your website that allows your website to communicate with the Google servers and then starts giving you the information you need. Now, Angel also talks about um, free platforms like a um, WordPress online or blogger.com, Tumblr, and all this stuff. They all have the same interface. It's just it's not self-hosted. So again, that code is useful for every platform any blogging platform that you will engage in. The other thing about this is the reason why it's so important is previously you were talking about knowing if it works. You will never know if something works if you don't have the data to support that, you know, that theory. But if you can see, like for us, on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I can tell you whenever you post a content, oh, Katie, that content is really doing really, really well. Maybe let's produce more of that content because 
our users find that engaging and valuable. And sometimes we do have those one-off content that, you know, they do well, but not as well as the other ones. So then we were not going to spend a lot of our time putting in promotion uh, money on, you know, and advertising those content. So, but for be able to decide on what is working and what is not working, the Google Analytics will help you track all of those and lets you make intelligent decisions instead of just using your hope and praying that something is going to work or maybe won't work. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. As Chris said, Google Analytics is invaluable. It's so important if you have a website to have a Google Analytics account. So please, please do make sure to sign up for one if you don't have one already. Um, with the code, as Chris mentioned, it might be weird to see the code at first. You might not be sure what to do with it. But if you do a quick Google search, there are some great um, websites and tutorials out there that help you um, know exactly where to put the code and, and um, what to do with it. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, and also, you know, like Angel suggested earlier with blogging within Facebook, don't be afraid to use Facebook Insights to see um, how that's going with your posts. And there's just one more thing that I wanted to add to. So say you're interested in blogging, but maybe your staff or your partners aren't convinced yet, or maybe they're unsure about the, the time that you would spend on blogging and if it would be well spent. Um, signing up for the Google Analytics account or using Facebook Insight if you're blogging within Facebook, those are two great ways that you can track your efforts. And then you can show them. You can show your, your team, your partners. You can say, hey, guys, look, blogging is working. It is paying off. It's worth the time, the effort, and you know maybe we should do more of it. Um, and then also, just the last thing, um, don't be afraid to ask your, your staff to blog with you. If they have um, some great ideas, maybe you have some younger um, uh, fit experts or you know bra fitters that have a different perspective or maybe you have someone that's older that's been doing it for a long time that has um, another perspective on it it's always a good idea to see if maybe they'd be interested in writing for you or with you or maybe sharing some of their questions or concerns that they have um, that you can answer on the blog too um, and we also wanted to share with you guys the homework for the week so we have our homework um, so we'd love for you, if, you're, if you are serious about blogging, if this is the right time for you in your business to blog, um, we would love for you to write down your goals. So one of the great things that you can do is write down your goals ahead of time um, before you start blogging. So these are your three month, six month, and one year um, benchmarks for your blog. And they're, they're your goals to, to look at and to consider when you get to those points. So definitely do write down your goals. Um, and then what I always suggest is to schedule time in your calendar to write, to, to record the audio, to produce the content. Um, stuff happens. Sometimes you'll start writing and then you realize that you are too distracted or you have something else going on and you just aren't in the mood to write or maybe you're getting ready to record, but for some reason it's just not recording or something's happening and that happens too. Um, and you know, when you're considering your time to write, do look at your day-to-day -day tasks and see if maybe you have 10, 20, 30 minutes that you can set aside in the morning, afternoon, or evening to just jot down ideas, write a sharp post, maybe start on Facebook, um, and just go from there. It's definitely okay to start to start um, small. You don't have to start on a website. You don't have to, um, to go out and start on a blogging platform if it's not right for you right now. Um, but definitely do consider starting. And then when you do get to the point where you've written down your ideas and you're ready to, to go live, um, publish your first blog post and share it on your business's Facebook page. Um, we often talk about promotion and promotion is just as important as creation, if not more so, because you want to make sure that your audience is seeing your posts and your content and that they are, um, they are getting value from it. And it's working as you want it to work. If you're creating blog posts that are, um, you're hoping to drive sales into, then you definitely want to, um, to promote it and to make sure that your audience is seeing that content. Um, and we also have a question of the day for you all as well. So this is episode 11 for us. So we've had 10 episodes so far. So we would love to hear the topics that you'd like us to cover in future podcasts. If you have any um, ideas for us or suggestions, we would absolutely love to hear them. Well, I would like to thank all our listeners and invite them to visit www.lingeriesuccess.com to access more episodes, articles, and tips. And I also encourage them to join us on Facebook. You know, our group is there is Laundry Success. And the other thing that I normally don't ask them is, you know, look for us on LinkedIn. Ask us a question. If there's anything we can help you with, and I can realize that a lot of the listeners that we have may not be our customers, but that's okay. You know, we're here to service the industry and provide value to every retailer that we can. 
So hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on LinkedIn. Just look for me. Look for Katie. Look for Angel. Maybe we'll sh- we'll share it on the show notes and ask us. Send us a quick connect message, and we'll definitely ask you. Know, we'll definitely answer you with whatever we can. And the other thing too is I mean, we encourage you to please do share this podcast, subscribe, leave a rating, and give us your feedback. It helps us continually provide impactful content that we hope you will find valuable. Absolutely. And, and I just want to thank um, our lingerie listeners for tuning in this week. And thank you for Chris and Angel for joining me here today and for providing content for our lovely listeners. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. This podcast is brought to you by Parfait. For more information, show notes, and downloads, please go to www.lingeriesuccess.com.